Hi folks, this is Suzanne in Ohio. I have something to share with you today, and I am so excited about these. I hope you enjoy them like I have. It was a happy surprise, and I was attempting to coffee dye papers, and since I'm doing um, a seashore journal, I thought about designs. I thought, now, if what these YouTubers are telling me about the coffee dyeing by using your heat gun, how the top paper absorbs the coffee, it's like an osmosis, then maybe I can just make my own designs. I didn't have any luck uh, using lace or a punched edge. I don't know what I did wrong. But I ended up making these and I wanted to show them to you. I have several because of my setup here. I just have to show them to you one at a time. So all the negative image shapes you see, I just simply cut out a paper. And I do believe they came out so good. Um, and good because the paper I used for the design, you know, to suck up the coffee, that was, um, what, what am I trying to say? A resume paper. And it just has a different texture to it. So you can see some of these seashells starfish. I just cut these designs out and um, used them over and over again. So I'm going to go through these quick so you can see them and then I'll show you the designs I cut and how I made them. If these start sliding off the table, I'll fix it. I also copy dyed colored paper and look at that. I don't know what it was. I don't know. I have a bunch of old papers that I picked up at the thrift store. But whatever this paper was, the pigment wasn't permanent. And the moisture displaced the color. So I ended up not only with the coffee dye, but with some of the original color of the paper being discharged. So neat. Cut out these coral shapes. And here's a blue one. Now, these can either be just journaling pages in my journal. I'm getting ready to do about three seashore ocean type journals. And if they're too dark, then they'll be backgrounds for collages. If they're too dark to write on that list. So, you can imagine my happy, happy moment when I pulled these things off and realized what a nice image I got. I even like this one. Some of them are, they're bright. They're a little bit gauche in a way, but uh, they'll have their purpose. They'll have their use. I might cut out those images and layer them onto tags or pocket fronts or whatever. But this colored paper sure surprised me. I think it's just cheap copy paper that you get in an assorted pack, you know, different colors. So I'm going to move along a little faster here. And then I started thinking, okay, this idea works. So the next time I do a journal with a different theme, like I'm starting to gather all my stuff for garden springtime journals, um, I could cut out watering cans, trowels, birds, just anything. I just loved how they turned out. All right, there's my stack. So let me take most of these away and I'm gonna show you what it looked like. Here's my stack of shapes. Now the reason they look so dark is that's how many times I used them and that's how much coffee they um, absorbed. So there's the one, snail shell, sea snail shell, try to say that one three times fast, and another type of conch shell, and of course starfish, and this is what I use to look like um, sea kelp or whatever. Now look folks, you don't have to be an artist to do this. I don't consider myself an artist, I consider myself a creator and I take lots of hints from other people. 
And if I have something I want to draw and I don't think I'm good enough to just look at it, I'll pull me up an image on the computer, print it off, cut, cut around it, and there I have a pattern. So don't let anything hold you back. Let me show you this coral because I should make some more coral. I've done it since with other things, but I just used my decorative scissors and that gave me that deckled edge all by itself. Okay, isn't that something? Now, I did a few in the beginning and I used copy paper to cut out my designs. That did not work. That paper got so soft and flimsy so fast that I couldn't use it. But uh, amazingly, this uh, resume paper actually just got stiffer and more firmer. Now, this one was a little tricky. I would do this one again. If I did it again, I'd do it a little bit different because I cut through all the edges, see? Next time, I wouldn't do that. I would just use my X-Acto knife and cut a few lines in it and leave this whole top section all connected because once this one got wet, I really had to uh, tease it back into place. It wanted to lose its shape. So there you go. A great new idea about coffee dyeing. And I hope you enjoy it. Please try it. And leave me a comment and let me know how you did. Show you a couple of these one more time. Oh, hey, I know what I wanted to show you. This one. Look at this. Here's the front of it, and it is quite intense. I did that on purpose. But when I looked at the back of it, I realized, I don't know if you can see it, but part of the shape came through to the back. And a, and a few of them did that, and I thought, okay, that's good. Okay, especially this colored one. Look, here was the front of it. It displaced the pink. I love how it left some of the pink there. And then when I turned it over, I had these faint images of the turtle and the coral. So that makes both sides of the paper interesting. And when you put them in a journal, I won't really have to worry so much about putting something on that side. I'll embellish it a little bit, but it's nice the way it is. Okay, again, coffee, dyed papers, the osmosis technique, that top paper that you lay on there like this. This design absorbs the coffee from the main sheet, and when you lift it up, you have a negative image. I think it's Crafty Irene that has a wonderful video on how-to, so I'm not going to go too much into that right now. I just wanted you to see my wonderful results. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm a brand new YouTube channel. If you like this video, give me a like and a subscribe, and watch often because I have several videos that will be uploaded pretty soon.